welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Tobago. I'm Davia Chambers. Today we are at the Lake House, one of Tobago's conveniently located and beautifully finished villa in the village of Canaan. And while we explore the property, we will recap the major events on the island over the past week. So stay with us as we bring you all the details, starting with this week's headlines. Young people are in the spotlight at the Tobago Youth Awards 2019. We'll tell you who this year's awardees are. The rights of our seniors take center stage at a one-day elderly symposium. Tobago shines at the World Travel Market in London. And later, a spelling bee competition with a twist as students compete in Spanish. We have all these stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. So stay with us. The lake house is named because of its lakeside location in Canaan's Salmon Grove development. Guests enjoy the serenity of nature and awesome views. And for the nature lovers, you'll catch more than a few glimpses of the local bird population. Now, awesome is also the word to describe the island's youth who are displaying their excellence in various spheres. And many of them were recently honored at the Tobago Youth Awards Ceremony 2019. Have a look at this story. Success is often achieved by those who don't know that failure is inevitable. Coco Chanel. It's an idea that's probably familiar to the honorees at the Tobago Youth Awards 2019. The annual function began back in 2003 to recognize and inspire young Tobago residents who've contributed to the island's development in various sectors. To the nominees and the eventual winners, the reason you're here because somebody, some entity believes that what you've contributed to the landscape of Tobago and Trinidad and Tobago is worthy to be acknowledged. Taking home the award in the education category were Trevera James and Kalisha Parks. Xavier Edwards was awarded for the Performing Arts and Chantel Dillon for Entrepreneurship. Jabez John was honored for Agriculture, Anicia Taylor Youth Service, Tyreek Mahabal the 2019 Youth Leader, while Shaquille Sylvester was named as the top youth in media. The award for health and wellness went to Trisha Guy and the Youth Mentor 2019 Prize, Alana Allen. For overcoming her sporting and academic challenges, Isla Stanisclaus walked away with the Youth Triumph Award. The most effective youth organization was Canaan Bonacord Police Youth Club, with Mount St. George Police Youth Club the most improved youth organization. And the most outstanding youth organization is the Charlottesville Police Youth Club. Finally, the People's Choice Award went to Rayanne Beckles. There were musical performances by Leah Richards and Jaron Nurse, while Sharon Phillips brought the curtains down on a memorable night. The Youth Awards 2019 was hosted by the Division of Sport and Youth Affairs at the Ballroom of the Magdalena Grand Beach and Gulf Resort. The spaciousness of this villa is perfect for larger groups. It's over 2,000 square feet of interior space, so everyone has ample room to kick back and relax in comfort. Now we're going to hop across to the opposite end of the island and the village of Charlottesville. It's where you'll find the Charlottesville Police Youth Club. The organization is making a difference in the lives of young Charlottesville residents and deservedly earned national recognition. Here's this story. It's no surprise to many that the Charlottesville Police Youth Club was recognized at the 2019 National Youth Awards as the most improved youth group. The award recognizes the club's commitment to improving its community and enriching young lives through community-based programs and social activities. The award brings an outstanding feeling to Director Rianne Moore. Winning the National Youth Award on the basis of the Charlottesville Police Youth Club is exceptional. This club is a 25-year-old organization which was revitalized six years ago back in 2013 under my leadership. So to bring a dysfunctional club from where there was no programs or no activities taking place and bring it to a level of succession. I feel exceptional. 
The aim of the club is to produce empowered, well-rounded and disciplined youth and Rian is encouraged by the positive changes she's seeing in young club members. Initially, I didn't want to do it because, I mean, as I said, this club has nothing going on for years. So to me, that's a big task. So initially I thought, I said, I doubted myself, I said, this is not for me. There were persons who were ill-disciplined, so we have changed in behaviours. I've seen some academic improvement as well. Um, social development, you see, in a change in interpersonal skills. So I think all wrong holistically, there has been a positive change in the young people in the community. Charlottesville Police Youth Club is also showing its progress in a tangible way. The club won its second straight Tobago Carnival Junior Parade of Bands title earlier this year. It's also successfully executed 25 community-based programs. Every community and every district will have different issues, social issues that are faced by the young people. So based on the social issues, we, have, we see drugs as a problem, teenage pregnancy. So based on the social issues of the community, you come up with programs to assist the young people in that area. The Charlottesville Police Youth Club is looking to the future. It's embarking on a project to construct an enhancement centre in the community. We have a piece of property that was just cleared and surveyed and that will be our next big project for the next probably two or three years, the commencement of that centre. In October, the Charlottesville Police Youth Club celebrated six years under its current leadership. I'm Kern De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. The Lake House is beautifully furnished and can accommodate up to 10 guests. From the bedrooms, you'll step into the modern European-style bathrooms, complete with rain shower heads and frameless glass panels. And as we speak about European, Destination Tobago was well represented at World Travel Markets 2019 in London earlier this month. And the island was rewarded for its hard work in marketing the destination. Here are the highlights. Just two years on from the campaign launch, Tobago's marketing operation, Tobago Beyond, proved it's a winner picking up the Silver Award for Best National Tourism Board campaign at the International Travel and Tourism Awards. The honour was presented by the World Travel Market at Magazine London. The awards that we won yesterday are really testimony to the fact that we are actually pointing in the right direction. It is indeed a team effort which has gotten us to this point. But when we found ourselves among the best in class and came off second, having edged out Incredible India, um, it really speaks to the fact that we, 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 are, we have done the right thing. According to the Tobago Tourism Agency, the island surpassed four other nominees, including Destination Campaigns, Incredible India, The St. Kitts Shoutout, Azerbaijan Take Another Look, and Feel Slovenia Experience Croatia. The gold award went to Tourism New Zealand. We have branded Tobago as it really is, and we have done it in a very interesting, attractive digitally relevant and a modern way and that sets the platform for progress and I think we are all very excited to have been able to achieve that by a panel of independent judges who have awarded us as second in the world for 2019. So we are very happy it's now to ensure that the product rises to that same level of the promise of the of the marketing. Tobago was also among the top three of eight finalists in the best destination campaign country category earning the third place highly commended title. Tourism Secretary Nadine Stewart-Phillips is attributing this success to strategic branding, effective marketing and a collective effort. She says the Tobago Beyond Ordinary campaign has taken the world by storm, registering millions of impressions on social media and other digital platforms. She added this is the result of the synergies and hard work of the Tobago Tourism Agency Limited and Gravity Global the creative minds behind the campaign. We have seen growth in arrivals to the destination and this is as a result of the collaborative work that was done with our marketing representatives here in the United Kingdom, our travel trade, our partners and of course our airlines. Accepting the awards was a joint delegation including Chief Secretary Calvin Charles, Councillor Nadine Stewart-Phillips, Tobago Tourism Agency officials, PR firm Gravity Global, and UK destination representatives, AMG Limited. We have to take a break, but when we return, senior citizens are creating awareness about issues affecting the elderly. Stay with us, Let's Talk Tobago will be right back.
Welcome back. You are watching Let's Talk Tobago and we are at the Lake House. Now, one of the first things you will notice at this villa is the quality of the design, construction and finishes, as well as the striking contemporary decor. And it's got 24-hour security to give you even more peace of mind. Now this, in the last few years, Tobago has paid particular attention to family development and our senior citizens are a key target group. In that spirit, a one-day symposium brought together seniors, technocrats, and professionals who discussed ways to improve the lives of the elderly. Omudara Mills explains. One in six seniors have been abused, and only 4% of elder abuse is reported. These World Health Organization statistics were revealed at the elderly symposium of the Fourth Caribbean Conference. The symposium focused on aging, elder abuse, and rights of the elderly. In addressing the issue, Secretary of Health, Wellness and Family Development, Dr. Agatha Carrington, is assuring seniors, health professionals, policy makers and caregivers that the division is being proactive to ensure that our elders are treated with dignity. We have decentralized our social workers into communities with the expectation that we will identify and intervene such as these incidents will not be overlooked. In situations of financial abuse or exploitation, we know there will be challenges because our elderly persons depend on others. Through our support systems, we will continue to provide the much needed response. Presenters shared statistics and gave suggestions on areas such as chronic diseases in the elderly, elder abuse, healthy aging, and what are the rights of the elderly. Rudolf Hippolyte, president of the Tobago Association of the Elderly, Tate, says the rights of seniors should be given due attention. They should be accorded all the services that are available. Um, the services of proper health care, nutrition, um, proper housing, alternative housing. In Tobago, there are more than 8,000 senior citizens. They make up about 12% of the population. Many of the senior citizens who attended the one-day symposium at Magdalena Grant Beach and Gulf Resort are pleased that focus is being placed on their rights and well-being. When I was told I had to come, I think, my Lord, I wonder what am I going there to go and do or see. What are they going to tell us about blood pressure and, di and diabetes again? But it's turning out to be much, much better. These programs educational, it is meaningful, and we need much more. The more, the more we are educated, like I said, the more contribution we can make. It's very informative, very educational, because you know sometimes we as elders, we, we don't know our rights as citizens in society, and sometimes we just sit back and allow others to well, as we say, take advantage of us. So it is very informative that we will know our position. During the event, seniors got free health screenings. The symposium was a collaboration among the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development, the International Federation of Associations of the Elderly and the Tobago Association of the Elderly. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Outdoors is the place to be when you are at the lake house. The pool, pool deck and porch all look out onto the lake, providing an ambience that encourages you to kick back, relax and really enjoy the moment. Now we all have a part to play in protecting the environment and the next generation of Tobagonians is making its contribution towards keeping a clean environment. They participated in the Keep a Clean School Award program, an initiative we'll hear more about from Omodara Mills. From as young as age six, children are learning to do their part to keep their environment clean and they're being rewarded for this through the Keep a Clean School Award program. The points-based initiative is spearheaded by NGO Environment Tobago. Mount St. George Methodist Primary School is one of the gold-rated schools in the competition. The school also placed first in the Reduce Your Waistline Green Project. The initiative encourages students to find creative ways to reuse and repurpose materials. The pupils shared their thoughts on being environmental stewards. I kept my school clean by throwing garbage in the bin. 
I feel very good winning the awards. I keep my school clean by sleeping in my classroom. I am very proud that we won the awards. 52 schools participated in the program for 2018 to 2019. They got bronze, silver or gold ratings based on how clean they kept their spaces. St. Patrick's Anglican Primary School participated in both areas of the program. The school received silver for keeping a tidy school and a second place in the Creative Green Project. Pupils shared what they did to contribute to their school's cleanliness. When people drop in garbage on the ground, I would tell them to pick it up and put it in the bin. I would encourage children to keep their schools clean because the garbage will make the area smell and people won't like to come to the school that often. I feel very happy and proud for keeping our school clean. When I saw children in the time, I, I told them that's wrong, you shouldn't do that. THA officials, teachers and principals have applauded the Keep a Clean School Award program. I think it is a good idea to heighten students' awareness about the importance of keeping your environment clean and the importance of reusing um, waste material, for example, plastic, metal, etc., in the creation of teaching resources and other designs, school designs, within the environment. Secretary of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment, Kwesi Devines, is encouraging the students to keep up the good work. The power you all have, you, you do not even know. So the more you do to save your classroom and to save your school and keep your school clean, is the more you're doing to save the species of birds and fishes in the oceans. And the more that you're doing to save the planet that we all live on. The Keep a Clean School Award program started in 2013. The program is sponsored by BHP. And Ramat Tobago collaborates with the THA in carrying out the project every year. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. A large gas barbecue grill encourages outdoor cooking and al fresco dining. But if you're taking a break from the kitchen, that's fine because there's a selection of restaurants nearby for you to enjoy. It's also just a few minutes drive from ANR Robinson International Airport and popular beaches like Sobe and Pigeon Point. Te gusta el español? The students in this next story certainly enjoy the Spanish language. They competed in the 8th annual inter-school Spanish Spelling Bee competition. Here's this story. Hola, buenos días. Bienvenida al concurso de, del trío hispano en, en Tobago para los estudiantes en las escuelas secundarias. Welcome to the Spanish Spelling Bee in Tobago for students of secondary school. It's a competition with a twist. This time, students from secondary schools around the island participated at the annual Spanish Spelling Bee competition. For the past eight years, this competition has been running and it is put on by the Modern Language Association of Tobago in collaboration with the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy. It promotes, well, language awareness. It helps students build their confidence on stage to be able to spell the Spanish words and to be confident when speaking the language, just, not just written, but to have to express it orally. And I think it's very important because Everywhere you go, someone knows another language other than the mother tongue. I always say this. And to have Spanish on the island is something really impressive, and we are trying to promote it as much as possible. The students were really confident when they were spelling, and they seemed as though they really were drilled by the teachers. The categories were broken into two, juniors and seniors. And it was a fight to the very end as all the students came out for the top prize. But in the end... Bishops High School took home first place in the junior category and the Harmons SDA in the senior category. I put myself, I studied very hard almost every day. I was learning my roots. I feel very elated and I want to say thank you to my little sister because she helped me a lot. Okay. 
It's exciting, mostly because it took a really long time and I was just wanted it to be over. My teacher, Miss Allen, ensured that every week for the first month, which would be September, we spent about an hour studying our words and made sure that we learned how to pronounce them, the accents, etc. And then in October, we did it every day. So we are hoping to partner with Modern Language Association next year to have a foreign language festival. So that we have different categories, dance, songs, and give the students an opportunity to showcase their talents and to practice the language outside of the classroom, as I said once again. Also in the junior category is uh, Ogis from the Harmons SDA took home second place and Sophia Alexander came in third. And in the senior category, Rachel Smart of Bishops High School took home the second place and Tristan Grant of Goodwood in third. The competition took place at the Arn Gift Mitchell Auditorium at the Scarborough Library Facility. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Issues such as financial literacy are getting a full month's worth of attention in Tobago. You'll find out just how when Let's Talk Tobago returns right after this break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This high-end kitchen boasts granite countertops and stainless steel appliances. The kitchen island and bar allow you to enjoy drinks, snacks and good conversation while staying at the center of activities. And speaking of activities, the month of November is dedicated to finance on the island. There's a host of events to commemorate the occasion, as you'll see in this story. This year's breakfast meeting will seek to strengthen financial inclusion, trust, and protection in the banking and financial services sector by informing participants on the latest developments in mobile banking and digital payment in Trinidad and Tobago, the impacts, implications, risks, and opportunities associated with these systems, and the various preventative and protection measures they can utilize to ensure safe banking and payments. Also in the forefront are the Tobago Economic and Business Outlook Conference and the Youth Empowerment Forum, both at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Gulf Resort. These two events are key events in shaping how we go forward in the, our mandate as the Division of Finance and the Economy. We use these forums to exchange ideas, not just by sharing from the speakers that you will hear, but we hear from our stakeholders and we are able to incorporate the information that is shared to shape the policy direction that you hear, maybe in the budget and other initiatives that are undertaken. We understand and we recognize the fact that, yes, we are young today, but there are other younger people than us that will come after us with ideas that we may not have thought about. And we need to create that space, we need to create that environment that will encourage them to take advantage of it and to do better than we were ever able to do. And so the Youth Empowerment Forum provides that space that allows them to hear of ideas, to be encouraged, to be challenged, to come forward with what they want to do. Youth aren't left out. The Youth Energize for Success program will engage young people through an essay competition and mentorship entrepreneurial program, the Boss Launch. The very first event will be an annual essay and quiz competition for fourth formers in the various schools, secondary schools in Tobago. Indeed, this initiative was ably supported by Dr. Hazel, Dr. Selwyn Hazel, and the event commences on Wednesday, the 6th of November, with the preliminary round, this will be quickly followed in succession on Monday the 11th of November by the essay competition. And ladies and gentlemen, the final will be on November the 18th. One of the goals of the division is to achieve excellence in financial activities and entrepreneurial development. My A-class creative staff and creative managers and senior team that you are thinking about innovative 
new and novel ways of solving problems and introducing new programs into the Tobago environment as we adopt a Kaizen approach or solution-minded approach to problem solving here on the island. So we are not burying our heads in the sands and complaining, no, we are attacking and confronting the challenges head on as we treat with some of Tobago's important issues. Finance Month 2019 will end with the launch of BOSS Mentorship Entrepreneurial Program, which will run for six months. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Life is definitely better at the lake house, but while you are in Tobago, don't miss the opportunity to get outdoors. Take one of the many available tours and see all the island has to offer. So in our final story, before Finance Month began, Tobago joined the globe in commemorating International Credit Union Month 2019. And as activities came to a close, it was time to reflect on all the sector has achieved. We have more in this report. Take a look. Local service, global reach. That was the theme of this year's World Credit Union Day 2019, which featured a month of activities in Trinidad and Tobago. Celebrations began with a grand opening in Trinidad. Then Tobago hosted the Youth and Education Conference and finally the awards ceremony and closing banquet. Members were reminded of the importance of their daily service to clients. The celebration of credit unions and the work that credit unions do go far beyond the month of October. It is what we do every day in service to our members. Credit unions hold a very, very special place in the world. And as Mr. Chambers said, it must go on. The Tobago Regional Chapter of the Cooperative Credit Union League honored its long-standing dedicated credit union representatives. They included Adela Baird of Wim Credit Union, Alicia Nelson, Thor Credit Union, Idris Ford, Mount Pleasant Credit Union, Cynthia Williams, Lambo Credit Union, and Keisha Harry, People's Credit Union. The credit union movement is also being praised for its quality leadership. Trinidad and Tobago is crying out for leadership and the only place I believe that leadership resides is in the cooperative credit union movement because the business model in the cooperative credit union movement is one that speaks to the issue of cooperativism, collectivism and service. It has nothing to do with greed and selfishness. Youths were not left out of the credit union month celebrations. A youth conference was held to educate participants on the positive impact that credit unions and cooperatives have had on the economic landscape of Tobago. Term goals. It is never too early for our young people to start developing a habit and a culture of saving. It is important that our young people recognize and develop not to save what is left after spending, but to spend what is left after saving. The Credit Union Month Awards Ceremony and Closing Banquet was hosted at Ravenel's Resort and Conference Centre, Store Bay. I'm Antoinette Mora for Let's Talk Tobago. We've come to the end of yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago. And as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the programme and be sure to visit our website like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For more information on the Lake House, contact the property manager at 350-0893 or visit their website at www.sojourntobago.com. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We leave you with a montage of the Tobago Street Fair 2019. We do hope you enjoy.